Okay, humans and pollution. Um, so pollution is a really diverse phenomena of human disturbance in ecosystems. We'll get to a specific definition of that shortly. Um, and then we have the three different management strategies that we can use to deal with pollution. Um, so we can change the human behavior that produces the pollutant in the first place. Um, we could try to reduce the release of the pollutant at the source. Um, so trying to you know clean smokestacks as they're emitted or catalytic converters make the emissions in your car a lot cleaner. Um, or we could try to remove the pollutant from the ecosystem once it's already been emitted try to restore. So pollution is the addition of substance to the environment through human activity at a rate greater than which it can be rendered harmless by the environment and which has an appreciable effect on organisms there. So we're adding something to the ecosystem from people. Um, some of these might actually be natural um, sources too, like a lot of sulfur dioxides that you see in this smoke actually might also come from volcanoes um, but obviously there's a lot less volcanic activity than there is smokestacks in the world right um, and then it's released faster than it can be processed so um, the natural world can deal with the pollutants that are released by normal volcanic activity um, however if we increase it they can't really process it so much and then of course there's lots of impacts from smoke and smog um, affecting your lungs and breathing, but also affecting um, you know, visibility and everything with smog in cities. Um, so we have some, some uh, I guess, like categories of pollutants. We could have organic pollutants, um, basically carbon-based, um, or we could have inorganic stuff. Uh, we have see a lot of plastics here, very sad image. Um, though it does remind me of Carly's art piece. If you haven't seen hers yet, definitely check it out in Brady. Um, we could have light, sound, or thermal pollution. Um, so in the cities, you might not realize it, but you actually are experiencing lots of light pollution, which is why we see so many more stars um, here at VVS, way less light pollution. Um, sound pollution uh, happens in the ocean a lot with testing of like um, marine equipment, um, and that can affect like how whales and other um, cetaceans communicate with each other. Um, and then thermal energy, you know, adding really, really hot uh, liquids especially can affect really um, fragile ecosystems or actually vice versa too. There's some organisms that are adapted to sort of warm springs. So changing that temperature could affect them. Of course, we know lots about invasive species. Um, kudzu is a vine here that's um, spread incredibly um, abundantly over the south. Um, out here we have things like Russian thistle um, or tumbleweed, the deadly nightshade, of course. Um, and then, of course, burning fossil fuels makes a lot of pollution. <clears throat> um, we could have non-point source, right? So in this case, pollution in the river is coming from many different places, and it might be kind of hard to say um, exactly where. So perhaps it's motor oil, right? Maybe there was a car driving through this neighborhood, or maybe there was um, a tr tractor on these um, farmlands that was spilling oil, but it's hard to tell exactly where it came from. Versus a point source where you're like, holy shit, look at that pipe going directly into the water. That's not so good. Um, just some more details if you'd like. Um, some of these pollutants could be biodegradable as we do here on campus, um, or they might be persistent. Um, so that means that they would persist or stay within the organism. And you can see here um, the pollutant remaining in, in each of the our organisms in the food chain um, and then actually increasing in concentration too. Because um, if you think about it, right, we have some plankton here and then the animals eating several pieces of plankton and then the starfish is eating lots and lots of zooplankton and the fish are probably eating more than one starfish. Seabirds are eating more than one fish, etc. So the concentration will increase. Biomagnification. Um, and then we could have acute pollution um, versus chronic pollution. Again, similar to pain, right, where acute is going to be um, really uh, kind of intense symptoms appearing really close to when the event is, giant oil spills, that type of thing, um, versus longer term, low level pollution, which will build up over time. Um, and then they can be primary pollutants released directly from the source and just impactful, active on emission, 
Uh, or they could be secondary where they undergo some kind of physical or chemical reaction. So here's a bunch of secondary pollutants. You do not need to memorize this list, but hopefully you recognize a couple like, oh, this is some nitrogen compounds. These are some sulfur compounds. Um, this is ozone actually. <clears throat> um, so here's sort of a breakdown of primary pollutants and where they tend to come from. Uh, and then we can see here as secondary pollutants, um, so as we saw in the last one, nitrogen dioxide, <clears throat> excuse me, nitrogen oxides, uh, one of the main primary pollutants, they will come primarily from, <clears throat> excuse me, um, fuel combustion. Um, so driving your car actually produces nitrogen oxides. Um, so places where there's lots of cars, we have lots of NO2 in the atmosphere that reacts with sunlight. And the sunlight basically excites the molecules and one of the oxygen atoms breaks free. So we're left with uh, nitric oxide, NO, and then a free oxygen atom. And sometimes that free oxygen finds a, a normal O2, that's the oxygen that we breathe. Um, and if it combines with the O2, it actually will create O3, ozone. Um, the ozone's really good way up in the atmosphere, but down here uh, in the troposphere where we live, ozone is actually damaging. It affects um, organisms actually, if you breathe too much, it could be damaging. But also um, ozone creates photochemical smog, basically reflects sunlight to make it look it's really hazy. Um, so that's why you see lots of smog where there's lots of traffic because the traffic's producing those nitric oxides, which is producing oxygen. Um, and then that free oxygen is making all these different compounds, which will uh, lead to photochemical smog. Um, so these, a lot of these pollutants, there's like a benefit, um, you know, cost benefit analysis, right? So there's a lot of useful aspects to it. So here's uh, some examples of DDT. Um, when it was first introduced, they noticed how you know, widely effective it was at defeating um, pests like mosquitoes and lice. Um, so we could combat all those diseases that those pests carried. So they would spread it like all over the place. We see a nice little commercial here. Um, and you can see a dramatic effect, right? So this is showing um, the range of um, mosquito, Aedes aegypti. Um, and then after DDT was spread, the range shrunk dramatically. Um, but then of course they banned DDT. So the mosquitoes range has expanded once again. And that's really because of the effect on the environment. We noticed it was good for people, um, but for uh, especially birds, right? They would get a high concentration of DDT by eating lots and lots of fish. And the DDT was persistent. Um, so it stayed in the flesh, it bioaccumulated. And as it bioaccumulated, it would magnify up the food chain. And so it really affected all the, the seabird shells, um, bald eagle shells, peregrine falcon shells. Um, so basically these babies wouldn't even make it to hatching. Um, the shells would be too weak. And then some other effects as well. Um, so example questions, maybe construct a systems diagram showing impact of pollution, right? So we have our flows in the diagram. Um, and then you can see how Maybe if there's, um, say, like, you know, chemicals on the ground here, um, pesticides or herbicides, or if there's like motor oil and stuff, it might actually go into the runoff and then go into the stream and then go into the storages of the oceans, etc. Kind of a cool combination of, of the water cycle with pollution. Well, cool, you know. Uh, maybe evaluate the effectiveness of the three levels. So again, those three levels are altering the human activity. Um, controlling the release of the pollutant through like legislation or laws or cleaning technologies, um, and then trying to remove it once it's actually in the environment. So what are the benefits of these stages? What are weaknesses of them? And then which one do you think is, is sort of most effective? Um, evaluate the use of a, a pollutant um, or a different pesticide or herbicide. So what are good things? What are bad things, et cetera? In the evaluate questions, really make sure you have, um, you know, which is most important. What's the overall answer, overall appraisal? Um, a lot of times, if you just list pros and cons, you won't get full credit on an evaluate. You have to take a side yourself too. Um, and once again, you can find details for this uh, slideshow in the description.